What's up guys, Jake here with a quick message before we get on to our show. Please make sure that you like this video below, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, and also make sure that you sign up for notifications. With your guys' help, we can ensure that all of the guests get the right attention and audience that they deserve. I thank all of you guys for joining me along this very adventurous journey, and now let's get on to the show. What's up everybody? I am here today with a fellow Vegas unicorn. That is right, somebody who is born and raised out here. We don't, I don't ever have the opportunity to talk with uh, many born and raised Vegas kids because uh, we are a rare breed. I'm here with Catherine Kelly. She is the founder of Taste Buzz Food Tours. That's right. I don't know if you guys have ever been through a bar crawl, but this is the food version. They, she has won multiple awards with her business. And she is also a pro fitness competitor. So, Catherine, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I am a fan of this idea. It seems so simplistic because it's basically the, the foodie version of a bar crawl. And I have done many, many bar bar crawls. But food is something that I've become more in tuned with over my life, especially now that I'm out of college and I don't have to kind of show off in terms of dieting and things like this. Um, so before we do go into Taste Buzz Food Tours, um, I'd like to bring it back to the beginning just so we can go in chronological order and give the guests or the audience some context about who you are. So let's go back to, obviously you're born and raised in Vegas, as I'd mentioned. Um, let's take it back to, to, to high school. What was high school Catherine like? What kind of things were you involved with? And what was your mentality? Hmm. Um, high school Catherine. Well, I went to LVA. So, um, shout out. Yeah. Is that where you went? <laughs> no, I went to Shap, oh, but I have a ton yeah. of friends who went to LVA, a ton. Okay. Yeah. So LVA is in the downtown, lo like it's located downtown. Um, so that in itself is already pretty unique um, because. The city was smaller, but most people went to their zone schools. LVA was a very small, like unique. Um, it wasn't really a magnet school, but you had to apply to get in. Um, so you had to maintain a certain uh, grade average and certain behavior. We didn't have sports. Um, we were more like arts and crafts. Um, I went in and I focused on technical theater, which is kind of like behind the scenes. We did like rope, lighting, electricity, woodwork, sewing, I'm painting. So already like it's, you know, like kind of behind the scenes style. And then um, I transferred into foreign languages. So then I studied Japanese too while I was there. Um, That's quite a shift, yeah, I have yeah. to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Um, I, I don't know. I like different languages and theater was, uh, I didn't want to do theater. It was like too much uh, in people's faces, like for me. And I really like being like behind the scenes. Like I wasn't, I'm, I'm not big into getting a lot of attention. So like it was safe, like studying foreign languages or, um, behind the scenes in theater. That was safe for me. That was my safe zone. Hands on, like using my brain or my hands or something like that. It's, it's quite ironic now, the position that you're in where you're pretty much in the front lines doing tours and now you have to have a, a media component to to branding yourself as well. And also competing, you're literally front and center. Yeah, yeah no, it's, I mean, the personality's taken a little bit of a shift, um, but it's more something that you can like control, you know, like I still, um, I don't love a lot of attention and I'm not like big and extravagant. Like, look at me. I like staying still like behind the scenes, but I do know like part of the job, um, being a tour guide, like you would have to be present yourself in front of a group of people. Um, and then I did study to be a teacher <laughs> when I was in college. So that prepared me for standing in front of a group of tourists, you know, or like a group of foodies that want to go eat. And then I think it helped as well when I do the, the videos and standing in front of a, an audience that's looking, studying, I guess, judging my body <laughs> <laughs> for a Did you go to UNLV? I did go to UNLV. Yep. A fellow I, rebel. Yeah. Rebel. Whoop. <laughs> so it's so funny. I would say probably 80% of the guests that I've had on here that graduated from UNLV ended up 
doing something completely different from what their degree actually is <laughs> or oh, pertains to. That's yeah. I'm included of that with graduating with the health science degree. And now I'm talking to people. Yeah, exactly. So I graduated, my degree is actually in romance languages. <laughs> so I studied French and Spanish and uh, yeah, now look, I'm doing food tours. <laughs> I'm sure that comes into use though. Like being in Vegas, it's a very internationally driven town. So you probably have all kinds of different guests or customers that come on the food tour. Yeah. How, how many languages do you speak? Um, I guess three, um, English, French, and Spanish. Um, but I do love culture in general. So I think that's kind of the reason why, um, working in tourism and working with food is, um, is, uh, it's a passion of mine because you get to study other different cultures through food. I can see that that relation because when you're studying different types of languages, you, you kind of want to know a reason why. Like, what's what's so cool about this culture, and especially romantic r languages <laughs> as well. There has to be something to it than just the the language structure itself. It's it's really driven by the culture. No, it it, it is actually. So, um, when I took a year out of college to go to France because I really wanted to learn French. Like you can study a foreign language here as much as you want to, but you probably really wouldn't learn it or like fully grasp the language without immersing yourself in the culture. And so I was lucky enough to go to France. I found a job teaching uh, English um, in exchange because I wanted to learn French. Um, and my French improved tenfold. Um, I would say I'm, I'm pretty fluent in conversation. Um, and you can understand the culture better. So, um, you understand the culture, you understand the way people think when I speak in French, I speak differently than I would in English. The American version. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. It's really weird. Like, um, I would say things in French that maybe are a little bit more direct or Frank. Whereas like if I'm speaking in English, I would be a little bit more like subtle about it's like, it's, like, it's like the proper version yeah, in a sense. It's you. It's just the way you speak. It's, it comes out in the culture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah. I, I took three years of Spanish in high school. I took one year of Spanish in, in college still can't speak Spanish, yeah. but <laughs> from, from what I remember when I was learning Spanish, it was, it was like the formal version of everything. And yeah. so when you're, when we would speak to some of the Spanish speakers in the class, class, they're like, this is not how you say it. This is not because it's more, a lot of the languages are really driven by like the slang tenses of everything now. But you know, the other thing too, is like, there's so many different like dialects of Spanish. So if you're trying to learn Spanish and you have a teacher from like Mexico and then in an, your next semester, you have a teacher from Argentina and then the next semester you have one from um, Colombia or something like they're, they're all going to teach you different vocabulary, different forms of speaking, different grammar, um, personality is a little bit different. I mean, you learn, so it's hard, like, and then they come here and they're trying to do their best to teach you this like generic Spanish that doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. So you really have to go, you just have to say, I want to study Spanish from Mexico and you have to go to Mexico and you have to learn that culture and that language. It's almost like, uh, in America as well. I think, I think in how America embraces individuality, it seems like almost every single person here has like their own form of the English language as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's very interesting to see how things translate over and then kind of like culminate and com combine to, to create your own specific type. And food's kind of like that as well too, especially in Vegas where you see all of these different restaurants where it's like, Oh, we're Asian. I'm just going to make this up. We're, we're Asian French cuisine. And you're just like, how do you even come to something like, like that? What is that? Yeah. yeah. No, it's great. All the different fusion. I mean, they're amazing. Yeah. You have to really understand like the cultures, but it's great for Vegas because we have this, like we're a big melting pot of a bunch of different cultures and a bunch of different people who are visiting from all these different places. So it appeals to, to everybody. Did you have the idea of, Taste Buzz food tours from since, I guess, graduating college? Was this something that kind of melded in your mind for a long time or was it no. sort of a, of an epiphany? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's see, let's go through the journey. So after I came, I mean, Taste Buzz food tours wasn't even a thought back then. So I came back from 
from France. I graduated college. I went back to France because I, I was still wanted to do that like teaching route. I wanted to be a teacher. Um, but I realized teaching is very hard. <laughs> it's a it difficult is. job. Yeah. So um, I just, I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, and I, I was tired of just studying and working. Like when you're a teacher, like even when you're not on the clock, you're working, like you have to grade papers and you had to come up with new assignments for the next day. Like you're working nonstop and people look at you as like a role model. And I mean, it's, it is a very difficult and like taxing job. Um, and I just, I was at that age where I was like, ah, I don't really, I want to just have fun. Like through elementary, high school, college, like all I've done is like study. So I was like, what do I want to do? What is it that I've always wanted to do? I'm going to work at a restaurant. Like I'm going to work at a restaurant. I'm going to make money and I'm going to make friends and I'm just going to have a ton of fun. Right. And that's exactly what I did. So I started working in the restaurant. Um, and I made my way up. I did everything. Um, I started off as hostess. I did, um, server bartender and I loved it like cocktail waitress. Um, and that was when, I mean that in combination with like going to actually like my love for food started in France. Um, but then coming back and working in the restaurant, it was just like, this is my passion. I really, really love working in the restaurant. I'm going to open up, uh, my own restaurant one day. And after doing it for so many years, like serving and bartending, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I'm kind of, I was just looking for something more. Um, I just didn't really like the hours. And I was like, you know, I just, I just need something different. I want to try something different. And I took this six month period off and I traveled across the country. And while we were traveling across the country, we visited like maybe like six different cities. And as we were driving, I'm like going through all these different books. Like, where are we going to go eat when we get here? What are we going to do this? Where are we going to go? Like, I want to really experience like what the locals are doing. And, um, I came back and I was like, I really want to do that for Vegas. Like people come to Las Vegas and they're probably confused. They're like, what am I supposed to do here? Like, you know, you have the clubs, you have like the casinos, you have um, these big restaurants, but like, where do I really go? And I was like, you know what, I want to tell people that this is, this is what the locals do. This is, you know, I want, I want to help you. Like if you're coming to Vegas and you don't want that big, like crazy Las Vegas adventure, there has to be some people out there that come to Las Vegas and just want to see what the city is really like, you know? And so then I, I was like, let me, I'm going to try out like a, um, a vacation planning, like a DMC kind of thing. And I, I built this website and I did all this and I was like, I'm going to tell people like, Oh, if, if you want to go here and I'm going to plan their, their trips for them. But everything was like, people are going to want to know where to eat. People are going to want to know this. And everything always came back to the food. And then I was like, I'm just going to focus on the food part. And then, so I put together like this little tour, um, didn't really know what I was doing. I had never been on a food tour before. I didn't even know the concept existed. And I was like, well, I'm just going to put something together. And voila, like <laughs> Taste Buzz food tours came about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there was a few pivots along the way since you founded this. I believe I have it written down in 2016, right? Uh, yes. Like we converted in 2016, like 2015. I was like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to tell people where in Vegas to go because I know the city like nobody else, you know, born and raised here. I've seen, I've seen it change. Like I have the stories, I have history. Like I work in the casinos, I work in the restaurants. Like I know like the cool places that we would go to and hang out and I'm going to let them meet my friends and we're all going to have a good time. <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm glad that you spoke on working in the industry and working your way up from hostess to bartender. And then you wanted something more because there's a message that I preach on this podcast all the time is that the Las Vegas strip breeds so many entrepreneurs. It's insane. It's insane. Cause because of that, you can make a lot of money pretty quickly, but also you just become so infatuated with what's happening in there that eventually you want something more because it, the spark kind of fizzles out a little bit. 
And then people end up using that experience and knowledge and money to go build something else on, on, on the side of Vegas or even incorporate it into the strip in downtown, which is what you've done. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I think a lot more people nowadays are starting to venture out into that like entrepreneurship um, and like finding ideas and actually going with it um, because I have seen it. I mean, I've worked in it and it's a great starting point. Like if, if you're smart, like you can invest your money wisely, save it and actually use it for something else. Cause I mean, it's a fantastic place to work the strip um, downtown, the casinos. I mean, like they give you, I mean, there's money there. Like you, you know, I mean, you're serving or you're bartending or you're cocktail waitressing or you're bussing and you're making money for not, going to school. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're making good money and you're making, um, you get health benefits and, um, you know, you have, you don't have to go home and work <laughs> like yeah. I did as a teacher. Like, I mean, it's, it's a great lifestyle, but a lot of people go from, I'm so excited. I'm going to make a ton of money. And then once they start making a ton of money, they become unhappy. And then they're just like, they're complaining because every day isn't like, a thousand dollar day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they start like, Oh, I want to do something more. And I mean, like you should, <laughs> if you're unhappy, like you really, you should take that dive and go into something else. Yeah. As long as you don't. So there's two things that can happen or that generally happens, um, for somebody who's been working in the industry for a long time, either you make so much money, you kind of become content with what, what the situation is go going on. You know, you can make all that kinds of money and you're like, all right, this is, this is my plateau. You know, I'm cool making a hundred K or whatever it is. We used to make a joke at the nightclub that we're making, we're making doctor money. That was like the joke, like, oh, we're making doctor money, pouring juice. But to me, it was like, you know, it's good money, but as long as I don't give it back, which a lot of us do within our first few years being on the strip, because you see, you know, you're catering to all these VIP guests and you're like, man, I would like to be on the other side of that table. So you go out and you, you know, you go party at the strip clubs or you go out to the, the clubs. And after a year or two, you're like, wow, I just gave back all of my money that I just made. Like, yeah. what am I doing? But eventually, hopefully, eventually you wise up and you realize like, wow, this kind of money is rare to make. Like outside of Vegas and maybe Miami and a few other cities, like this doesn't happen. Like I'm in such a unique position to build something special. I need to save my money and prepare myself for what, what, what can be. Exactly. It's, yeah. <laughs> Good. There's no, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it's a great place to be and to work if you're totally happy with the situation. Like, I mean, as long as you're happy, I mean, really, like if you go into work and you're happy working and you love like greeting people and just going to work, doing your job, making the money, going home and being happy, like that's great. Um, and then there are people who go in there and they're not happy anymore. And that's when, you know, it's what I mean, whether it's to start your own business or not, like you should probably just find happiness. Yeah. The grumpy gills, <laughs> I used to call yeah. them. It's it's just that uh, it's usually the back of house talk where people just instead of engaging in normal conversation or something that's interesting you end up just shitting on the people around the uh, the restaurant or around the club and you're just like god yeah you seem actually unhappy <laughs> and sometimes that uh, you know that environment is toxic and um you know i've i've been to or i've worked at quite a few venues on the strip and it it can be toxic and i'm one of those people that like absorb the environment. So like if I'm in an environment where everybody's like kind of negative about it, despite the, I mean, it was great. Like I said, the opportunity is great. Um, you're coming home, you're making like decent money. And, um, I did have a job where I was working at the pool bartending. And I mean, like you're outdoors, like you're around people, they're happy. I mean, like why I, you know, you're making them happy. Like I'm doing something I love, but sometimes there's like that toxic environment that you just, you want to just get out of. Yeah. So when you went on to, to, I guess, pivot into Taste Buzz food tours, how did you begin to build connections to these different restaurants of where you wanted to do and kind of incorporate the infrastructure? Was it from people that you already knew from working at all these different venues or did you just flat out like email and approach owners of the different uh, restaurants? I think it was a little bit of both. Um, but for the most part, most of the restaurants and food places that I had, that I started taking, um, I guess to were places that I had 
gone myself and they're places that I enjoy and I go there regularly. So it just, it was natural, you know, like I would take, Hey, these are my guests. I'm bringing, you know, I'm, I'm taking them to you now. I want them to experience this like amazing uh, service and food that you give me. And um, it was natural. So like, it just kind of grew from there. Um, but there were some times where you have to approach different restaurants. But at the time, like, um, I mean, in 2016, like, that was really only, like, f I mean, it's almost five years ago. But um, Vegas has changed a lot since then. Um, but it was a little bit more difficult because the concept of food tour was, I mean, pretty much unknown. Yeah, right? you were the first one, right, to hop on the, uh, the food tasting uh, tours? You know, I think there's a couple other ones. Um, there was one... Um, when I used to work at Sushi Samba and they would come in, but I had no idea, like it was, um, they don't even exist anymore. Um, yeah, the, the business is gone and, um, but totally like we, we took it in another direction and we take them to like smaller foodie restaurants that like are more personable kind of like the the Anthony Bourdain model where he's like whenever I want to travel I don't want to go to the commercial or or chain restaurants I want to go to you know um whoever's cooking on the side of the street but that's more of the the Vegas version the, the smaller mom and pop kind of things uh yeah so um I I find that there's different styles of people I mean we do a little bit of both um, we actually take them from like the small hole in the wall places. And then we do upscale as well on the same tour because people want that experience, but they're all places that locals love. And when you're touring the restaurants, are they sitting down? Are you guys having a meal? Is it more of like an appetizer and hors d'oeuvres kind of thing? Like what, what's the, the meal structure? Um, they're kind of like, it depends. <laughs> I mean, every place is different. So sometimes it'll be a, bunch of little appetizers. We might sneak in a dessert in the middle of the tour. Um, we might do like a chocolate tasting. Um, I mean, but for the most part, the places that we go to, they're like the signature dish or like really what's popular of the place. Um, kind of, we just want to show off um, what makes each place special. So we want them to go back to these locations. And I mean, that's... Right. Sorry. Are, do you guys, when you, so when you go into these restaurants and you have these uh, specific meals that are catered towards the tour, are you given, does everyone sit at one table? Is it sectioned off? Um, how, do, how does that work? Um, we have our own table for our groups. Yeah, so we have our own table for our groups. And then because we go in there so often, like we get, you know, like the if the manager has time or the chef has time, they'll come out and say hello to our groups and stuff um, and say hi to everybody. And they'll explain the dishes and so they kind of get a little experience, like some, um, some places you get like a little tour behind the kitchen, um, or they'll make like special dishes just for our group. And then we get discounts and stuff if they come back, like well, that's, it's important to add the experience to tours like that because yeah. anyone can just go to a restaurant and sit with your friends and have a conversation, but how businesses are catered now in today's day and age and you know, the, the younger generation millennials, um, and even Gen Z it's very experience based. They want to remember why they are doing that tour or going to that place or going to the club. So it, it, I like that you are adding an additional component to, to the tour. Well, I mean, it's more than just the food. Like, uh, I mean, it's based around the food because uh, I mean, like I love food so much. And I was like, <laughs> you have to try all these food places, you know, but I think it's more the fact that they're like, we're smaller groups. So it's very personable. Um, I touch base or like on our tour guides as well. They touch base with everybody on the tour. They make sure that they're comfortable. It's almost like having like a personal guide, you know, like if you, I like to look at it as like, there's a ton of people coming to visit Las Vegas and they don't know anybody that lives here. But we would be their um, avenue into saying, like, I know somebody that lives in Vegas and they gave me, like, they spent a whole day or a half a day showing me around to their favorite places. And we met other locals and we got to try some really good food. But at the same time, we also got to see the city. We do sightseeing as well. And you get, like, history. So it's really, I mean, like, the whole thing, it's more like an experience as opposed to just, like, food. Do you give them random, uh, random facts along the tour? Totally. <laughs> yeah. Every, I mean, 
we talk about, I mean, it kind of depends, honestly, like every group is different. So every group has their own personality. So you kind of go with the personality of the group. Um, How many people are in a group? Um, we cap it. Well, right now, eight, but usually it's like 12 anyway. So we're really small unless it's a private tour. That's a little bit different. Like in those ones, we can, the larger group format, but, um, we like to keep them small for that reason. Um, is so, it, is it eight because of COVID restrictions? Yeah. But I mean, even now, because it's only four to a table, we had to split the groups up. As that's leading into my next question was <laughs> how has the tour changed since the COVID pandemic has kind of just ravaged the city? Um, well, we've had, you know, we've had to find different routes or sometimes different restaurants and stuff, but for the most part, like, um, or, you know, like some of the restaurants as well, the menus are a little bit more condensed. Um, so we've had to find different dishes, but I mean, everything's still great because people still want to come to Las Vegas and they still want to find out like, where, where are we going? Like, where are we hanging out? Where are we eating? Um, and then, like I said, it's about the experience. So if you have a great tour guide and you have a great person to like guide the group, then they're going to have a good time no matter what, you know, you put good food in front of them and they meet like friendly local faces, like what's there not to like. <laughs> it's true. All of us, uh, fellow Vegas unicorns or locals, we're very passionate about our city. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a great city, you know, it's changed a lot and there's a, there is a lot to the city that visitors don't know about and I, like personal, personally, like I want other people to see the the charms of the city. There's, there's just too much <laughs> that goes unnoticed. You know, we get like a bad rap. Sometimes a lot of people are like, I don't like Las Vegas. And I'm like, well, let me show you Las Vegas. You know, we have a lot of people who are like, I came here because my husband, um, he has to work on a convention and I just came along. I'm so glad I found you because I, I never used to like the city before, but I see that there's a different side. Yeah. A lot of people get turned off primarily for the re resort fees and the kind of nickel and diming that the, the corporate casinos have kind of done. Caesars and MGM talking about you guys fix those resort fees. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I agree with the same sense that once you start going into these more nuanced casinos or even places like downtown or even in the arts district, I can't tell you how many people who came down here that were in town and they're like, wow, I never even knew this place existed, the arts district and like mm -hmm. all the different restaurants that are down in this area as well. But even, I mean, even if you look at downtown, like, so a lot of people go to Fremont street and they don't ever leave Fremont street experience. But like, I mean, literally you walk across Las Vegas Boulevard and there's a whole other side of downtown. Um, and they just need somebody to like hold their hand and like take them there so that they can see it and experience it. And I'm not really sure why they don't, you know, cross the street. I think it's because, you know, all the lights and stuff are mm -hmm. gone and they, they envision Vegas as just being like the neon lights and like the loud noise and the street performers and stuff. But it's like, no, this is a part of Vegas too. And this is a big part of it. Which tour is more popular? I know you do the strip tour and the downtown tour, which one gains more traction? Um, and then we, we are opening up the arts district tour in January yes. as well. Yeah. You heard it here first guys. <laughs> Boom. Um, they're equally as popular. Um, I, I want to say the strip tour is very popular just because a lot of people are already on the strip. Um, and they, you know, it, it takes them to a different avenue. Like we, they see like the little nooks and crannies of the strip. Like we go in and out and like explore smaller places and you know, the stuff that, cause you live here, you're like, well, I already know about like, you know, secret pizza inside the Cosmo, but these people, like a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. you know, like to us, we're like, yeah, that's a great place. Everybody knows about it, but uh, uh, people don't, <laughs> they just need to be told that it's here. And, um, and then you have downtown, which is great because there's history and it's, it's, it's a different side of Vegas. You know, like the strip is, is very big. <laughs> it's big. It's new. Um, downtown it's, it's different. Um, you have the old, you have the new, you have the lights, you, it's a little bit more local. Um, but you have a lot of people who are like, well, I've never really been downtown before. Like they've come to Vegas so many times and they're like, I've never been downtown before. I don't, maybe it's the, 
the things that they've heard or they just don't think they like it or they're like, we were here a while ago. We don't really like it anymore. And it's like, come with us. Like, we're going to show you. I re- we're going to show you downtown. <laughs> I really feel like downtown is going, going to boom once the coronavirus um, restrictions are lifted. Mm-hmm. I had a Scott from Vital Vegas on here the other day, and we basically talked for like 30 or 40 minutes on how downtown was trending really hard and how they're trying to bridge the gap from the strip because of how the leadership on the strip is not in line with where the city wants to go. And it's kind of sh- being portrayed through the the occupancy like drop rate like it's not many people are staying down there and when I had Jonathan Jossel on I've talked to some of the other people downtown they're saying like their occupancy rates are actually pretty good and so people are starting to go down there because it's more affordable and the culture down there is much different it's less commercialized than downtown where you can feel the essence of the locals and the downtown area are you talking about now? Now, yeah, right now, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say I would say that that's true. Um, w- now, like when I visit downtown, um, there seems to be a lot more people, like in in comparison. But I, it's hard to tell because the strip is just so vast that you know it would take a lot more people to fill up like a space to make it look as as busy. Um, but I think people are starting to appreciate downtown a little bit more and they're starting to understand that there's a different part of the city that exists. that's you know, just a couple miles away. Um, it is different, <laughs> um, but it has its own charm. You know, uh, you just had to go and experience it. But I think as well, like, because there's not a lot of things to do right now. There's a lot of shows that are closed. Um, you, people are starting to venture off a little bit more to discover a little bit more of what the city is like. Tell me a little bit about this uh, arts district food tour. If you can, if you can speak on it. Um, so same concept as all of our other tours. Um, we're like history, um, a little bit of sightseeing. Um, we'll visit five different restaurants and um, a couple different tastings at each place. Did, did you decide to come down to the arts district because there was I guess more attention or more interest in the area, or is there something that you see in the area that made you decide to add an extra additional tour down here? Um, Well, it's something I've been interested in doing um, for a while now. I mean, the arts district's been, it's been growing Uh, right now. It's at a really nice, it it just had a really big growth spurt, (laughs) but even like a few years ago, like there were, there were interesting little like shops and bars and, Um, history that comes along with it. And actually like, I mean, I grew up in the middle of the city. So um, I don't know if you grew up kind of closer. Yeah. I I went to shop. So I grew up literally like three miles from where we are. We're actually, for those that don't know, I live in the arts district. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I'm familiar with this area, like even growing up because I, I grew up really not too far away from here. So I mean, it's exciting for me, like when, you know, the first like coffee shop and then the first bar and, you know, like antique shops started popping up. It was like, wow, like this is really exciting. Like I can't wait. And now there's a there's a ton of things here. So I think uh, visitors still don't know about it. Um, It'd be it'd be nice to be like, come come off the strip, you know, like let's check out a different neighborhood of the city. Yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the people that I've talked to. Um, online and a lot of the, the tourists that follow me on social media and I talk or I reference the arts district, they have no idea what it is. And even mm-hmm. some of the, the popular podcast hosts are like, yeah, I've never actually been in the area before. Well, you know, it's funny too. A lot of people are like, oh, that's downtown, isn't it? I guess technically it is downtown, but it's like, no, it's a different neighborhood. Like it's the arts district. Like it has a, it has its a different charm as well. Like every, every neighborhood is different. Yeah. We just had two new restaurants open up down here last week. Good pie and uh, main street provisions. Mm-hmm. I've already been there. It was delicious. Good pie is amazing. <laughs> I haven't been to, I haven't been to provisions. Main street provisions yeah. 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 We went there the other day and then I'm going there again. Uh, what is tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's yeah. exciting. I have to tell people during this whole pandemic on the weekends, I haven't seen any change in the amount of uh, people who aren't coming here. Like Friday through Sunday, the streets are just filled with cars and people are out here because of how unique the the restaurant culture is down here. You have like Taco Tarion, which is a vegan taco place. You have Esther's Kitchen and then you have the two new street, 
places and, uh, and Cornish Patsy. And there was another brewery that just opened up down here literally like a month ago. So now there's three down here. Like it is a very, it is a blooming place. Hey, it's thriving. Yeah. The <laughs> arts district is the place to be. Yeah. How long are the food tours? Three hours. Yeah. So you get a little bit of exercise in there too. Yeah, you get, we walk a decent amount. So you want to make sure you're wearing like comfortable shoes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you, it's the best way to explore the city is when you walk, you know, like I've, I've gone to other cities and when you walk, you get to explore the most and you get to discover the most when you, when you get in a car and then you go to a new place, like you're disoriented. You're like, I have no idea what part of the city I'm in, how far away I am. Um, so, and there's a lot, I mean, you don't need to go anywhere. Like there's a, there's a lot of information right here. Speaking of exercise, I mentioned right off the bat that you're a fitness competitor. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Seems a little, uh, counterintuitive almost. You're like somebody who's giving a food tour is also competing on stage because I know if I was hosting or if I was giving the food tours, I, I wouldn't be able to stop at just the appetizers. I would need like multiple rounds. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is true. It, um, you have to have a lot of self-control. Um, but you know, it, it's great because you get to enjoy both worlds. And for me, they're both my passions. So I'm really excited that I get to do both. Um, and actually I do want to say like, as much as I love eating and eating is great, but I, I do know like if, Every day, like you're eating, you go out to eat and you're eating like really salty, really fatty, really sweet foods. Um, and I know just from experience, like when you start to eat really clean, wow, the amount of flavor, like, and the explosion, like of all of the, you know, like pizza and cake, like it's just, it's, it's immense when you eat like really, really clean and really healthy, like the, um, the amount of um, pleasure that you get from eating. You have like more appreciation for yeah, the food Yeah, you now. do. Because it's almost like your taste buds get like, um, I, I mean, maybe like a little bit dulled when, when you go out and you're just constantly eating a ton of flavor. But then when you like, so if you can control it um, for even just a couple of days and then you go back to eating something like so like rich or so savory or decadent, like the, I mean, it's, it's impressive. Like, <laughs> so here, you'd be really surprised. Let me propose the uh, the chicken or the egg question. Which came first, the the fitness adventure oh. or the food <laughs> food adventure? Uh, I'm well. I'm gonna say food. Um, when I was a kid, I I think I was a little chubby. Um, so food definitely came first. But I was always also into nutrition. So I remember at a young age, um, well, high school, um. I was a little chubby and I just remember being like, I'm going to start cooking for myself. And I, I started dieting, but I would, I would diet, but I would make my own foods, but everything was delicious. Right. Like I would make these quesadillas. I would just like count my calories and stuff so that everything was controlled. Um, but I've always loved food. Um, yeah, you can't take that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what inspired the, uh, the fitness journey then? You know, I've always been athletic. Um, I've all, so since I was probably in high school as well, like I've, I've always gone to the gym. Um, it just was something that I really enjoyed doing. Like it kind of just gives me like peace. It's, it's the one time a day where I go and I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to think about anything. Like it, you know, you release a lot of stress. Like it's my me time. Like everywhere you go, there's a lot of like, you know, you have your family, you have your friends, you have like strangers, you got work, you got all of this stuff going on. You have homework or whatever it is that you're doing. It's always like in your head. When I go to the gym, it's like, I can just focus on me. And so I've always been going to the gym for that. And then, um, you know, it, it's just, it's become really popular and you see all these fitness models and stuff. And I just, uh, I did a fitness competition in 2016 <laughs> same time about the same time I launched the business and um I I didn't really enjoy it like it I think it was probably just a lot of stress like it was a lot going on at the same time and now I feel a little bit more comfortable and I found this I found a coach and he's he's like my mentor as well and he he was he's been talking to me about it and he just truly inspires me and so 
coming out of COVID, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try this fitness competition thing one more time. And I, I actually really enjoyed the process. Yeah, it was really great. I can imagine in 2016, uh, you, you're coming out from behind of the theater curtains and now you're competing on a level and you're also giving toys. It must have been a little bit of a culture shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I mean, you people change and they evolve and, you know, like you grow. So I just, I, I just, I found my passion and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to do the things that I enjoy doing now. Like, um, no more, I, I don't care what other people think. I'm just going to do it. Like I, I'm going to be selfish. It's going to be all about me. <laughs> I have to say too, if one of the largest cultures in Vegas is the foodie culture, I would say second or third is probably the fitness culture out here. It's yeah. there's the gyms are loaded 24 seven commercial gyms, boutique gyms. Um, there's a lot of competitions. I mean, you even have the Olympia competition convention that's out here. So there's a lot of focus on, on being healthy. Well, um, so that was actually really big news. So the, the Olympia actually moved to Miami this year. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was devastating. Yeah. Because we get a ton of business from all, you know, like the bodybuilders, they come here, there's the, there's the convention every year in the summer. And then we have Mr. Olympia. It brings a ton of people. And, uh, you know, I mean, just like everything else, the conventions all decided to go other places. I hope it comes back. Yeah. Uh, I would this hope is Vegas. Yeah. I actually, I need to talk to him. I was trying to get actually the CEO of the Olympia on here. Uh, we're in like the same social circle. It just hasn't worked out, but I have to tell him, dude, you have to come back to Vegas. There's nothing yeah, like sure. it. We, we need it. Dicks. Mm -hmm. I've been, uh, I've also been a little bit of a fitness junkie myself. I started a similar as very overweight when I was younger and then lost a whole bunch of weight in high school and kind of been going to the gym ever since then. And I like the the solace that comes with it where you put your headphones in, you don't really have to talk to anyone. Well, now you have to put your face mask on too. So yeah, no, no one can even, yeah. Up, yeah. Except I don't work out with headphones. I'm yeah. Are I you a sociopath? In, I know that's what everybody <laughs> says. I love it though. You go in there and you kind of just like, you watch people, <laughs> you listen to the sound. I mean, some, not all the sounds are nice to listen to, but I mean, it's good. You know, you're in the gym. You want to, you want to feel like you're part of it and stuff. You're really indulging in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm there. When I, when I focus on something, I'm 100% in. <laughs> I can see it. What, what kind of a training regimen do you have to go through? Um, when I was doing the competition. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll say training regimen in a competition versus just actively working out? Well, so during the competition, I was there, uh, my, my coach, he had me in there like seven days a week sometime. Well, actually like towards the end. Um, and it changed, it changes throughout. I started about 13 weeks out and, um, it got stricter and stricter the, the closer we got to the, to the big day. But, um, I would be in there I mean, you know, just a lot of weights and then a lot of it has to do with like eating as well. So you got to figure out your macronutrients. I've heard it's like 80% diet. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with diet. I mean, you've seen like a ton of people there at the gym all the time and you know, you're, or like maybe even yourself, I'm not sure. Like you go to the gym all the time and you're like, man, like how come I'm not achieving the results that I really want? It's because of the it's because of the food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The food can make or break you. But that's why you have to have that balance of like eating, like, you know, you can eat really healthy, but you can also like enjoy food. So I, I like to be able to do both, but bringing it back to the, um, the training. Yeah. Just sometimes I'd be in there twice a day, but I, I like to get up early. I like to get it out of the way, not out of the way. I enjoy going to the gym. So it's not like I'm getting out of the way, but like, um, I would wake up <laughs> And I'm an early riser, like sometimes like 4.30. Yeah, like when we were walking up here, she told me she woke up at 4.30 today. I was like, wow, you're literally yeah. beating Jocko Wilnick to the punch. I wasn't trying to one-up you or anything. I was just like, it, and it was a mistake. Like, I mean, I got good sleep last night and, you know, I woke up at 4.30. I was excited. Yeah. You know, big day today. Um, but yeah, I got the gym out of the way today. Um, so that's, that's a typical routine for me. And then if, but if I can't make it, like I make sure I go in the evening. Um, but training, yeah, it's, it's mostly just food and you just have to keep track of it and everything. When you're dieting, is it tough to go on these food tours and smell all of this, you know, salty or just very 
refreshing food? You know, <laughs> um, sometimes, yes, because you, I mean, you know, like you, you look at it and you're like, oh, that looks so good. But you just, um, you don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret. Just don't sounds look easier at, than actually done. <laughs> don't look at the food. Um, don't look at it in the eye. Um, yeah, you know, that was hard. But I'll tell you what was even harder was that all these new restaurants were opening up. And, you know, they're like, come to the opening and come check us out and stuff. And I would go and everybody's like drinking and trying all their appetizers and all these dishes. And they're like, try this. Like, you'll be the first one to try this. Like nobody, you know what oh, I mean? Like, so the, the have you been to an opening of a restaurant before? Uh, I don't think I have. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, uh, I mean, they're amazing. And then you're, you're surrounded by a bunch of people that, you know, everybody's having a good time and food is like the, I mean, that's your social circle, you know, like everything's revolved around food. And that was hard. So like having to say no to eating when I was going to these like restaurant openings and stuff, that was difficult. But I just told myself, okay, just another like three weeks, just another two weeks, just another one week. Oh, like, yeah. Man, so I mean, countdown. I'm slowly making my way back to all of these restaurants and getting <laughs> to try all of them. When was your most recent competition? Um, in September 26th. How'd that, that go? That was the one that I, yeah, that was the one that I won. Hey, uh, yeah. I got her to say it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a, I mean, that was, that was actually like a really proud moment for me. Um, was that your first uh, victory? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. It was just, you know, it was just more being able to accomplish it. Like you work so like you had this goal and it's so far away and you're going towards it. You're going towards it and every day. It's on your mind all day long, you know, and then finally it's here and you, you get there and if you didn't cheat and you know, you did the best you could, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like you're a winner regardless. So, I mean, you just go there and you know, I did the best I could and you just feel so like beautiful, you know, I mean, everybody's like looking at you and it's just a, it's an amazing moment. Yeah. <laughs> what competition was that? An amateur or pro pro one? It was an amateur. So the next level is to get your pro card? Um, well, yeah, I'm going to do a couple more amateur shows. I think like, it's nice to have the practice, you know, like with the, the, the dieting and, um, peak week and the depletion and stuff like that, like just to have them under your belt. And then I got plenty of time. Plen <laughs> plenty of time. I've had actually a few competitors on here who've attained their, their pro card. And uh, actually I had a woman on here recently. She, she had a bunch of sponsorships before she even got her pro card. And, but then once she got her pro card, she realized like, it's not even necessary and, because it's, it's all about your look. You know, it's like, you don't really need this, this card to validate what people look at you for, or even your own like, personal views of yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me, let me reword it. Yeah, so I, I, I had a, I had a woman on here. Her name's Katie jung -Wah. She got her pro card at 19, but she had sponsorships already before her pro card. Mm -hmm. She told me that once she got her pro card, she realized that it's not really necessary and that she could have continued competing in amateur competitions to, to land all these sponsorships or deals or whatever the case is. So it's almost like you don't really need it. It's just more of like, she said that when she attained her pro card, it was just more like, I can do it. It was more like she was telling herself, like she has the ability to capture whatever she needs and she has the, the willpower to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it depends on your goals. Yeah. Like some people like that pro card means everything, you know, like to, or to be, um, Miss or Mr. Olympia, like that means everything. And some people it's, you know, um, to get the recognition, um, some people, it's just to feel their best. Um, some people just want to stack up all the awards that they can get. I think it depends on your goal. Um, but that's, yeah, definitely, that could definitely be the case. Uh -huh. What is your goal? Um, you know, I really enjoy doing it. I'd like to get a couple more awards. Yeah, I think that would be fun um, to to be able to do both and work really, really hard. And it's nice to have a hobby outside of work. I mean, I love to eat and I would say eating's my hobby, but now it's work too. So like, you know, it, you, it's nice to have something else to look forward to. I guess if you got your pro card too, it almost become work round two. That is true. It is a job. I mean, it is like I, you would think about, I mean, preparing the meals and 
I mean, eating, keeping track, going to the gym, talking to the coach, posing practice, like posing takes up a lot of time. Um, taking pictures, like, I mean, you got to take a ton of pictures. Like that takes up so much time. Um, yeah, it is almost like a part-time job. You're in the gym maybe like, or, you know, putting at least like 20, tw at least 20 hours a week. How important is posing to the overall competition? I've, I've been able to talk to some or you talk to somebody who has gone down the route of posing. I know you have to put a lot of time into it. You know, I could flex my arm like this. It seems pretty easy, <laughs> yeah. but it seems actually uh, easier said than done. I think it's different um, for whatever category you're in. So I do the bikini and bikinis a lot more about um, stage presence and um, overall like look and stuff. So you can have, um, you can have an amazing body, but if you don't know how to show it off, then, you know, somebody who, you know, if you're just standing there picture like side by side and you're looking at pictures, um, you might, you might not have as like, you might not be as muscular or you might not be as toned or you might not um, have that really tiny waist, but if you can pose in the right way, like, I mean, you got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long do you spend posing, practicing, or I guess practice as posing? much as you need? Yeah, um, probably like a good. It depends, but you should probably practice posing maybe like 20, 20 to thirty minutes a day. <laughs> and I need to, I need to get some tips from you <laughs> to show off for the gram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it, it's it takes a lot of work, you know. And then you're researching, you're constantly looking up other like poses, and you're like, what's my style? What is you know like what looks good? What doesn't look good? And you, you make appointments with your trainer and everything. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. Maybe down the road, once that the food tour is expands more, the last stop can be at the gym and you can help them yeah, that right. as well. It's like, your expertise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's actually any gyms on the strip or at least any that you can take people to. So, you know, I mean, all the hotels have gyms, but not like they're kind of like tucked away a little bit though. Yeah. Yeah. If you're staying at the hotel, you can use the facilities, but I actually, I'm not even sure if they're open right now. <laughs> the ones at the, at the casinos. Yeah. I know the plaza actually has a, I think it's called real results gym or it's like one of those. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Something very specific. That's kind of why I like the downtown areas. They have all these like nuanced activities and amenities that you can't find on the strip. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, there's a lot more community, I guess you would say, in the downtown areas. So here's the most basic question that I could come up with is, what is your favorite restaurant? Oh, that's so hard. That's not <laughs> an easy question at all. Um, Here, okay, I'll give you favorite one in the arts district, downtown, in the Strip, and, uh, and local. <laughs> um, my favorite restaurant... Um, you know what? I love Esther's Kitchen um, in the Arts District. Yeah. Um, Fire. Mm -hmm. Fire. Yeah. I love yeah, it. You, um, everything there has been delicious. Um, downtown. Mm. Oh, these are so hard. There's just so <laughs> many and my mind is going blank right now. Um, you know what? On the strip, I would have to say it's not open right now, but Harvest at the Bellagio, it was like that restaurant's amazing. What is that? I didn't even hear that. Um, it's Harvest uh, by Chef Roy Elamar, and he's Hawaiian. Um, he has this like Hawaiian fusion restaurant. The food is just so fresh, and he uses like these beautiful vegetables from local farms. Um, and I mean, you just have to try it. Like it's amazing. Um, explosion of flavors, <laughs> like I was saying. And um, downtown. Uh, you know what? I really like Veggie Nation. Um, Me too, actually. Yeah, like vegan restaurant. And I mean, like I'm not vegan, but I eat everything. But I love, I mean, the restaurant's great. It's a, it's a very approachable for people who aren't vegan or, or like to introduce others into, um, into maybe like a plant-based lifestyle or just, you know, exploring something that's a little bit out of their avenue vegan food has grown the whole just the space around vegan fruit has grown so much over the course of even just five years that i didn't even consider vegan food i thought it was like just it didn't sound interesting to me i was like oh i just want to eat a salad and eat like a rabbit but then you realize like the way that these chefs 
cultivate their different foods, like Taco Tarian, for example. They have literally like 30 different taco options and they're all vegan. And there's one in there, it's like a plantain taco. I was like, With what the is- mole? See, yeah. I love Taco Tarian also. Yeah, there's just too many good yeah. restaurants. Like it's hard to, it's really hard to pick. Like, Yeah, that's, what, that's why I said it's the most basic, but it's also the toughest question too. I don't think it's fair. <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's and like- it depends on your mood, you know? Like sometimes you want like, Sometimes you want a taco, like sometimes you want a pizza, like sometimes you want like a nice sit down restaurant, like and great craft cocktails. Like it just depends on your mood. There's so many facets to the food industry, to being a foodie. Mm-hmm. I give you guys props. The <laughs> best. It's a difficult job. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you have to I, eat all day. <laughs> I always said that like the best way to get likes on social media is to post a picture of the food. You know, you could post a picture of you doing like the cool thing and it gets like 30 likes and then you post a picture of a nice looking pizza and it's like 400 likes Seriously, something that's uni- it's universal with like the cheese dripping off of it <laughs> and everything and everybody's like oh my god that looks so good yeah it's, it's the essence of vegas it's when, this is actually i mean um this is kind of funny when i was probably like the last two weeks before the competition and i think i was just like I mean, you know, like you're, you're very lean at this point. So you're just like, your body's kind of like craving food. And I would go on Instagram and I would look at all these like food, um, food pages. It's like food porn. Yeah. And I just, I, I could, I was like eating the, the phone, like the pictures, they would look so good, everything. And then sometimes I would just have to be like, I got to put that away. Like I'm going to, yeah. But uh, I mean, I never cheated, never once. So that was good. I give you props. I'm going to have to go on one of these tourists. Honestly, yeah, I, I wasn't really aware. I've seen some, I'd seen some videos and pictures, but I didn't realize like how fine tuned the business was and the extra experience additions to it. I really enjoy that. Yeah. It's more, I mean, it's more, like I said, it's more than just the food. The food is great. Um, but it's, it's the whole package. It's experiencing Vegas like a local and getting to hang out with a local, like, and, you know, and having a friend here. And then, you know, afterwards you can, you have places to visit and you have places to show your friends and, you know, you can reach out to us for more recommendations. Like afterwards, it's, it's a great total package. (laughs) Agreed. Everyone has to hit Catherine up to go. Um, how, before, before we get out of here, I have a few more questions, but how often are the food tours? Mm, we run them daily. Daily? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's putting in work. It's a 24-hour town. <laughs> <laughs> People are here every day. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, I mean... Fridays and Saturdays are busy because it's the weekend, but you have people coming in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, like every day of the week. So do you do breakfast, lunch and dinner? Um, lunch and dinner, like afternoon and evening tours. Do you do a breakfast one? I'm in there. It's all I ever order is Bre- breakfast food. <laughs> breakfast food, yeah. So I will let you know when that happens. Oh, I'm, I'm in there. Catherine, I always ask one parting question. Same question to everybody. The one question is, what does Las Vegas mean to you? It's home. It's home. I'm not going anywhere. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's the, the mountains, the sunrise, the sunset, the, the weather. Um, my family's here. My friends are here. Explains why you born and raised here, went to France, came back, came back. Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And And I'm sure that you have the same experience where all of your friends that end up leaving, they always end up coming back as well. Yeah. It bring it. I don't know. There's something about it. Like it pulls you back. And, um, I remember being younger and always saying like, I'm, I'm going to leave Vegas one day. I'm going to leave Vegas one day. And, um, I don't know, I'm still here (laughs) and I love it. And I have a home here. And even, you know, if I were to like travel the world, like I do always want to come back and have my, my house. We beat everyone to the punch because now everyone's moving here. We're like, this is our town. I know. We already have our foot in the ground. I mean, like part of it, you're kind of like, this is, this is my place. This is my city. But then the other time you're like, okay, yeah, like definitely it's a place to be shared. Yeah. I believe in that. If I wanted to direct all of the viewers and listeners to learn more about you, where would I send them? Um, so our website is tastebuzzvegas.com and, um, we have Instagram and, uh, Facebook pages at taste buzz food tours. What about, do you have a next competition lined up or anything like that? How do, um, how do I, how do I follow you and <laughs> watch me, this? Could, um, support? I, at, on Instagram, I'm Kathy fit foodie. So Kathy underscore fit underscore foodie. Um, and my next competition I'm planning for next September. 
yeah, I'm going to um, just, you know, it takes a while to build up the body and change it a little bit. And I want to enjoy my food for a while. Like that was a long, that was a long diet. <laughs> A very Vegas person, a fit and a foodie. Don't yep. see that combination that often. <laughs> Catherine, thank you for coming on. This is a very eye-opening conversation. Um, like I said, breakfast one, 100% in, but I'm going to have to come on one of these tours soon yeah, anyways. To, Trial to, three. To, I'm, I'm <laughs> in there. Send me in there, especially the arts district. I could literally just walk right outside the building. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to knock on your door. Hey, I'm come get you. You know where I'm at now. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for having me. Of course. It was a pleasure. Thank all of you guys for listening and we will catch you next time.